Hello there, my good old big brothers and sisters. This here is Bulldog Rod, and over here we got Papa Ron. What's happening to you? I'm, Did... I'm on my phone, Ron, and I don't know what side you're on. <laughs> yeah, you're on the right side, but uh, when you turn your head, you do lose a little bit of your volume, just so you know. How about that? If yeah, that's like... good. Rod, where are you at? I'm in the hospital, man. I got sick oh, this morning. Uh, yeah, you told me. Yeah, I had a, uh, I had a uh, diabetic, uh, whatever they call it anyway. I passed out. My, my blood sugar was 16. They should have, the doctor said I should have been in a coma with the, that, that low of a sugar. <laughs> but but yeah, folks, I, I <laughs> let, let me say something about this. You know that old saying for the uh, postman, whether rain or shine or snow, they deliver the mail? Well, That's look, right. look at Bulldog Rod. No matter, right. no matter, death is it you're knocking at your door, brother. We're gonna do the shoe. I'm, I'm gonna do a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we're glad I'm you're here, Rod. Yeah, I'm me glad too. you're better. I'm, Hopefully, you get out tomorrow. I yeah, uh, it doesn't look like it. it. Looks like I'll be out Monday. <laughs> that long? Yeah, well, I got some. I got some kidney failure too. So, because of it. Oh my heck. Well, bless you, yeah. brother. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm doing good right now, though. That's all that matters. Day by day, an old man. <laughs> well, we don't we don't got a lot to cover. I mean, we got an exciting show. As a matter of fact, folks, we're going to be talking about this, uh, and I'll introduce that. But but stay with us. There's some interesting things we're going to that are going to be brought up in this show towards the end, I think, or all through it. So. Stick with it. Right. The, whole, the whole thing is interesting. But right now we got this market cap, and we are back above eleven thousand, baby. Can you believe that? It dropped down to nine. It's already up to eleven thousand. What the heck? Yeah, what two days? Is that's all it's been? <laughs> that's all it's been down. is two days, man. We can make money. We 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 just make money as we're sleeping. Hell, I'm making money as I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Look at Litecoin, it's up almost 17%. It's over 100 bucks again. Oh my gosh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah, hey, look at everything is green, man. Well, that's because that's because Bitcoin's up, right? Yeah, it's the Christmas that color. When the tide comes in, all the boats float, is that what you said? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, listen, we have we got a, one article first. Um and uh, we, we've already announced this, that there's trading of Bitcoin coming onto some of the commodities. The uh, U.S. Yep. Commodities Commission authorized it. And, uh, you know, this what they're saying, this is just going to bring a lot of legitimacy to the Bitcoin and the crypto world. Um, as it gets on these futures, you know, there's not actually any Bitcoin that's traded back and forth. Nobody actually buys it, but they just kind of hedge bets against where the price is headed and based yeah. on certain dates. Yeah. And like Rod pointed out yesterday, there's so many things that are on the futures market anyway. Uh, most are food items and all that are on it. Oil and gas. So. Pork it, belly, babe. Pork bellies. <laughs> Um, and Rob likes those pork skins. He's from Texas, boy. I am. That's right, baby. <laughs> so this starts uh, December 18th is when these things, the CME and some of these take live action on these futures well, trading. Wonderful. Yeah, it's not very far away. And, and actually, if you think about that, and they're talking about just like uh, Coinbase's new exchange where they, uh, they, they feel that there's um, – Ten billion dollars on the sidelines, just waiting to get into this market. Uh, if you don't wow. think it's going to impact the price, it is. Hey, you um, bet you. How soon? I don't know, but towards the 18th, I could really see more jumps in Bitcoin getting closer to that date, as people anticipate where this thing's going to go a little bit. But you know, it, you know, it could be up to fifteen thousand by the end of December. Well, it could, could Rod. It could, but honestly, it's I, well, I think it's going to be there. Maybe, maybe it'll be twenty. Who knows? Yeah, it is. It's already eleven something. Could it could jump up pretty dang quick? I'm telling you. Remember how it jumped and went up from 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 eight to twelve or eleven something, eleven six. 
in a matter of two days, you could do the same thing. (laughs) That's right. Anyway, and I don't know how many watched that TV sitcom last night. I didn't see it. It's on uh, the whole part of the episode was on Bitcoin. Well, that's those four geeks that live across the hallway from that blonde. What's that called? That show. Anyway, again, it just it. it just brought more awareness to Bitcoin. I think twelve or fourteen million people view that that sitcom every week. Wow. And I wish I could remember the dang name of that, but. Anyway, listen, we want to get into this article, um, and, and I'm not going to show it on the screen. We're just going to kind of highlight it through, and this guy's name is James Alcher, Alcher, and he is a stock picker. He picked what stocks, he's got, a, he's got a huge following, what stocks are going to go up and drop, and, and he helps people, and he's also got his own thing going, helps people decide on where to put their money, and he has been following Bitcoin um, and this crypto world quite a bit. I hope he's been betting with it. Yeah, I, the article really didn't say if he's actually got money or skin in the game. I don't know. But he says... He don't. He's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, if he's following... And, and if he... You know, that's a good point, Rod. If he believes what he's saying in this article, I'm sure he's dropped some money in it. Ask me. And he's saying that the cryptocurrency market is here to stay. Um, and he wow. is an investor, and he, he's got what he calls his 10, 10 predictions. Um, and like we talked about yesterday, Rod, you and I, yeah. Yeah. about the imbalance of amount of Bitcoin to the amount of buyers. And remember, we were yeah. joking around how they probably have to give rain yeah. checks out and sold out and this and that. But yeah. sooner or later, and that's what drives the price up. If you have more buyers than you have merchandise or inventory. That's exactly it. It's called supply and demand. Yep. And that's when these Satoshis are probably going to come into effect. What were you going to say? Yep. That was it. That's okay. Satoshi. Because what? I think a Bitcoin can be divided into a million Satoshis. Yeah. Um. So anyway, as he goes through the article, he says, uh, demand and supply imbalance. Alcher predicts that Bitcoin will top a million per coin. Now, this is the second or third guy that we've read that has predicted that. One million dollars. And then he's going to go through here and give his reasons why he thinks that will be on its way. Uh, first of all, he talks about that there's 200 billion in cryptocurrencies out there right now, and really, it's more than that, Rod. What? Yeah. On the oh no, actual. I think he's not doing market cap. I think he's talking about no. actual worth of cryptos. Yeah. Um, and then he says that there's over 200 trillion in demand for money, fiat currencies. Um, that's the amount of paper currency and gold bullion in the world. So he says that that's gold and fiat, two hundred trillion. So Bitcoin wow. is very a minute part. And folks, if you're getting any interference, Rod is sharing a room there. So, uh, but yeah. I think everything's good. Sorry. No, no worries. Okay, here's his ten reasons why, and we just want to briefly go through. Here's a real short. Um, at least one country's currency is likely to fail soon. Likely Argentina or Venezuela. So he's thinking that one of these currencies are going to tank and this will drive mass adoption towards Bitcoin within that country that will in turn lead to Bitcoin rising by more than $50,000 when it happens. Wow. That's rising more. What's that, Rod? Has Zimbabwe already done that? No, I think they're still hanging on too, but that could be one of them. But he's yeah. talking about one of these countries' currencies will fail soon, and that that'll drive the price up. Number two, mainstream banks will accept Bitcoin and will start offering storage and software access. This will create <laughs> cryptocurrency derivatives, like this, like we just started doing with the CME. Yeah, yeah, and he, and here you. Here you got Coinbase's new exchange. Their whole premise is that they're going to securely store these assets. 
So he's thinking these banks are going to come along and start providing that service also. That would be astronomical, wouldn't it? Yeah, I could see him doing that. I mean, to get in the game, to get in the game. Yeah, and if they did that, that drive, that'd drive Bitcoin's price way up even more. It'll help. Number three, despite the optimism, there will be massive wipeout and 95% of all altcoins out there will go away. Just like in the dot-com burst, the surviving coins will go up a ton. This will happen, catch this, this will happen according to him in the next four to six months. Oh. That, that wow. a lot of these, they call them SHIT coins, will just dis- disappear <laughs> because their platforms really aren't producing. Their roadmaps are too long in, in uh, getting it together. They have no accountability. You know, we've talked about these ICOs yeah, and all yeah. these new companies and stuff. So, there are some of them that are good. Well, yeah, and that's what he's saying. Some of them are going to stick around. The ones, the ones that are worth something, will be there. But uh, all these fly-by-nights, they'll be gone. Number four, the U.S. government will secretly start accumulating one of the smaller cryptocurrencies to make it easier for gray area transactions with other countries. This has already started happening, but will really ramp up in 2018. Government involvement, unbeknownst to us maybe, and and he, it's not that he knows all this. This is just a guy that's been his whole career in financing and in stocks and bonds and all this stuff. And he's into he's saying these are the likely things that I see happening, and that government is probably already unbeknownst to us using a crypto that they can trade and do business with in outside countries, and nobody would know because. You know how it is? It's all anonymous, kind of. That's right. Who would know? Yeah. (laughs) Except that country and the United States. (laughs) Yep. And you know how much money we filter around the world? Oh, yeah. Okay, number five. Um, China will invest heavily in another cryptocurrency, but probably not Bitcoin. China will want to have a cryptocurrency that is competitive with Bitcoin, but under its centralized control. This will, in general, provide legitimacy to all cryptocurrencies. So as the Chinese government says, hey, th- this crypto stuff's getting huge. We- we've got to get involved. We've already told our exchanges you're not doing nothing. But we're going to take on a cryptocurrency that we can control as a government and that will bring more legitimacy to the whole industry is what he's saying. Um, so China I, might I be on board. I see that. Yeah, I can too. Number six. One big problem with cryptocurrencies now is their volatility. At least one base coin will likely dramatically reduce that in 2018. Um, really? Really? And he's exactly right. The volatility of uh, Bitcoin, we've seen it just this last week. It's up and down. How how do you... Okay, let's say somebody pays you in Bitcoin, Rod. So he gives you yeah. Bitcoin. It's worth $10,000. You go to yeah. pay your mortgage, and, and then you go to the grocery store, and by then it's dropped 2000 bucks in value. All of a sudden, your groceries are now one and a quarter of the price more to to be a stable currency to use every day like we do US dollars there's got to be kind of consistency in its value and that's what the Federal Reserve and all these central banks try to do with the fiat is they try to keep that that value the same so when you go to the store this week and next week your prices aren't fluctuating all over the place do you see the point of that I can see that. So if if crypto is volatile right now and just going everywhere, it's hard to say that we want it to be a everyday used currency because it can't. So you have companies like this. I'm going to pull something up now right on the screen. And this is the website to this Basecoin. So what he's saying is there's going to be somebody come along like Basecoin and their whole premise, their whole premise is they're going to take the volatility out of crypto. 
so that not not all of them the the coin they're going to use they're going to they're going to tether it to the US dollar hinge it on there and okay. uh, that will bring stability so what he's saying is there's going to be a company like this come along and that'll provide the stability of a crypto coin so people can use it every day. Now, as I got looking through this, I, I got... Do we really want that? Rod, you're a little staticky there. What'd you say? So do we really want that? Well, for it to be used every day, either either somebody's got to come on that's stable, like, you know, Litecoin seems to be pretty stable most of the time. It's going nuts now, but yeah, you need a... a currency to use where like you said when you put your check into the bank or into that crypto to spend it's not worth half the amount the next day or double the amount it, it's got to be worth kind of the same to work thing that uh, I, that I see is, the thing that I see is that we have uh, if this starts doing that then we start being more decentralized yes no we become more decentralized or more centralized? Become more centralized. Yeah, it might. It, it might. But uh, this will also be functioning, this base coin, on a blockchain. Um, so I don't know what the ramifications in the long term will be. But again, we've got to have some currency that's going to maintain a constant value to work every day. At least that's the way I see it. I'm sure if it's different, we'll hear about it in the comments. But I do have one concern about this base coin, Rod. You can, you probably can't see it because you're not set up on a split screen. No, but I'm it, not. it lists right here who's backing this, and the second backer is Bain Capital Ventures. Bain Capital Ventures, and that name rang a bell to me because I, I hope I didn't research it, but now I, now I'm thinking, Ron, you should have checked that first. I think Bain <laughs> Capital is run by Mitt Romney and his whole premise at least the company that Mitt Romney was involved with is they'd go in and buy up these companies hawk them to the hilt close them down and walk out of there with millions of dollars there's a lot of YouTube videos on bank cap if that's the same one and I should have researched it folks before I made that comment I'm sorry I didn't but when I saw the investor list I was a little concerned like oh man you got big money man coming into this thing yeah, you did. So um, that was number six. Number seven, more companies will pay freelancers with crypto, which will lead to calls for tax reform. There will need to be greater re regressive sales taxes, which will ultimately require government cuts and eventually less power for national governments. Well, this, in the, this is a long-term prediction, meaning that... Um, People are going to start using crypto to pay for, well, we've seen it already. They're paying for houses. They might pay a contractor or something like that. And there's going to be calls out there saying, hey, we need, we need also regulation on this stuff for the taxes and all that. And he thinks it's going to be a positive that it'll actually make more credibility and more people feeling safe around crypto, which will increase people using it. Well, as long as it increases people using it, that the better off we are. Well, yes, that's true. Oh, are these the clean ones right here? If, if but, then they, again, they, but then again, like like you said yesterday, those who are being a little shady on their taxes better start thinking about the tax man is coming. <laughs> yeah, um, we had quite a few comments about those tax things, but we? Okay. yeah, we had a few. <laughs> Um, and it's and you know people just have a beef with government and the way they just abuse the dollars they get. You know if they lived within their means and not print a trillion dollars extra every year more. I mean it just frustrates the populace that we think we've got to pick up the tabs on anything they feel they want to do. Um, so yeah, people are people are sick of paying for this stuff. I mean you've read the articles about four hundred dollar hammers and. Toilets that cost, you know, a thousand. I mean, we're just sick of it. And all the money we send and all the warring. I mean, there's we've got to get control of this. So I, obviously people are upset about the government saying, hey, we're going to tax you no matter what. Anyway, I, mean, I see their point. 
get rid of all the politicians and don't reelect anybody. Start fresh. <laughs> Good point. Number nine. A new government organization will be created to analyze regulation on cryptocurrencies. This will ironically lead to a huge upswing in Bitcoin and coins that provide actual utility. So there will be some platforms that come along that will actually have a use. And the government will probably put an organization together to see which ones that can be utilized. And they think he thinks that it will increase more people getting into crypto and i could see that i can too i can see that and this last one ties in with that one thousands of crypto companies will be created and go public but only a few will be massively successful um, and and we already know that look how many icos are upon us all the time i mean yeah. It, Rod, it wasn't that long ago. I'm going to share screen again. It wasn't that long ago that the amount of cryptocurrencies on Coin Market Cap was only yeah. 900 and something, and oh, it's yeah. up, it's up to 1,320 right now. Tell me um, about it. And and it's going to be that much more coming into the new year. Absolutely. And so there's going to be a lot of platforms, a lot of ideas, and some of them will probably benefit us all. I think they will. No benefits, is good. Well, folks, we're going to put this. We're going to put this article down in the description box so you can read it yourselves. But um, he's got a lot of predictions in here for next year that are really might start to kick this off, along with the adoption. Everybody flooding into this market, it could really have an impact on the value of a lot of these coins and tokens. Well. I think it will. It has nowhere to go but up. I'm telling you, everybody says we're in a bubble or we had too many people involved. We don't got nothing involved. We haven't even got 2% of the population in this yet. What they say. Well, Rod, we wish you the best, brother, and hope you get better. Yeah, I'm getting better every day. Just got to wait for yeah. those other tests to come back, and then I'll be on my way. And I'll call you and find <laughs> out what's going on tomorrow morning see how you're doing. All right. That's Folks, okay. thanks Before for watching. Before uh, we go, I show you. I got to show you some of my nurses here that are here with us. You know, Rod, you are your camera is on a still right now. It's not oh, it's live. On a still? Yep, oh. it's not live. Uh, what the hey? And, and boy, it's one ugly oh, picture you got on yourself too. Yeah, oh. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I'm going. Th that yeah. one's even worse. <laughs> oh. Oh. Wait a minute now. I gotta show you. I gotta you know, show you everybody. Rod Thank loves you. to buy these thousand dollar cameras, but he never learns how to use them. <laughs> I never had to know how to use anything. Can you see the little there? No, I can't see you right now. I don't. And you can't. No, you're, you you got a still shot there. You're off screen right now. Still. Yep. Hey, hey. Well, you're right. I don't know how to use the damn we'll, thing. We'll do a video tomorrow. Where we can look at the nurses. Yeah, there you go. That'll be good. We'll look at everybody tomorrow, folks. <laughs> If you're into this, you're in it at the right time. Just hold tight. Yeah. Bear with the dips. It's going to go up, and we're all going to make money on this. Appreciate you watching. Stay involved, and always remember, God bless. And thumbs up, baby.